Alright, this is Ant Dissections 101 for Robert Schofield's lab at the University of Oregon. This is David Lee narrating here for you. And what we have here is a soldier ant of Ada Columbica. And for those of you who don't know your genuses, that is the South American leafcutter ant. One of several subspecies. Okay, we'll dive right into this. So, for the first part, we take the curved forceps and the scalpel. And what we're going to do is we're going to just sever the head off or decapitate it. And take the curved ones, grab it on either side of the shoulders there. And if you tilt the head back, you can see a little a little line is connected with a little piece there and you just cut that just like so and we got a little bit much with the neck I, would, I guess you could call it and so what you can do with that is just use the straight forceps grab that little piece we missed curve forceps come down and grab either side of it and you pull there you go. Okay, now the next step is to remove the antenna. And again, we're going to use the straight forceps and the curved forceps. And you just grab one antenna, take the curved forceps, put it on either side of the ant. Come on. And pull. Try that again. Either side of the forceps with the curved forceps, straight forceps, and pull right back. All right. Now the next part is the removal of the glossia, which is the ant's mouth parts. And what we'll do is we'll flip it over with the toothpick. And with the straight tweezers, or forceps, and the toothpick, the toothpick is used to stabilize the head, just like that. And the straight forceps go right in here. You can see the little hairs if you pull on them. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. There it is, that's the glossier. You want to just grab it at the base and pull right out. Oh, look at that. We've got some of the fungus that they keep up in there for inoculation purposes, I believe. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me. And now we have our soldier ant head ready for the head width picture. And for the head width, what we do On my camera, it's slightly tilted, but when you look through the uh, scope here and you take your picture, it should be parallel with respect from one side to the other, and the eyes need to match up with that. And so I know in the video it's going to look like it's not parallel just in the microscope. When you're taking the actual picture, in the picture you just need to make sure that the head, the eyes, are parallel with your scale. Let's see if you guys can see that. There you go. And again, I know it doesn't look parallel in the video, but it is in the microscope. And now we, I take this heavy block here, and I put it right on the scale, like that. And what this does is it holds the scale flat, so that you can get a picture of and be able to measure without having any, any um, discrepancies in your, in, your, in your measurement because of it being up off the ground. And there's your first picture right there.
Again, the video has it slightly tilted because I'm using my camera on a tilt to get this um, to be able to work around the microscope as I take uh, make the video for you. But that's the first picture right there. It's going to give you the head width as long as the eyes are parallel with the scale. You have the scale flat. And um, before I do the picture, I always turn the light up and then I turn it back down. But actually, for the purpose of the video, I probably should have the lights on. But it hurts my eyes, so we're going to go back and forth. Alright, so next, we will take the scale off after we got that picture. And this next part is again done with a toothpick and the scalpel. And what we're going to do is we're going to sever the apodemes. And the apodemes are the ant's tendons that close and open the mandible. And so the ones we're going for are the closer apodemes, because if you sever them, the only ones that are available are the opener apodemes, and that will open their mandibles. And the reason why they're, closer, they're, they're closed right here is because the closer ones are really strong. If you think about it, these guys are really doing a lot of cutting, which, causes, which takes more force inward than outward. And so we're cutting the strongest of the muscles. And that muscle is actually the same reason why these guys, when they die, their teeth go... Um, good, pinched together and why you can use them as a suture in the wild. Okay, so right here what I found is the where the ant antenna was, a little pocket there. To cut the apple dune, we go up at an angle, we go down, you'll hear a click, and then just cut it. Just like that and down a little. And you should see the mandible will open up. Don't ever touch the mandible uh, in front of the teeth with any metal. If you're going to use the scalpel, touch it back here. And then, or the back of it if you need to like rotate it. And then we will move it over a little bit for you guys. Into picture. We'll stabilize the head again. with the toothpick and now we just do the same thing to the other side there's a little pocket right there I'm going to go into the pocket go down deep and cut go at a high angle and then kind of come down you hear that click and that generally means that you got it we're not trying to cut back here we're trying to cut in here there we go and now that allows us to freely manipulate the mandibles with toothpicks, as you can see. And now we can manipulate it into position. So from here, all we do is we put the ants up on a clay pedestal, like this. And I can't zoom in because it will mess up the arrangement that I have of the camera because the zoom because the focus for it is up and down. So I can I can zoom, but I can't focus it for you. But what you want to do is position the head so that the back of the head is down because the mandibles are mangled out a little bit. And you want to move the mandibles in a way that allows you to get a picture of it completely flat and I'll make another video showing you guys how to get the mandibles maneuvered into a proper position for, uh, for a proper picture um, but I am running out of time so there is the first steps of the dissection pretty much the bulk of the actual dissection the rest of this project is nothing but getting the right pictures of the mandibles and manipulating them. Sometimes it can take a good 10-15 minutes just to get the mandible pictures that you need. Um, and that's that. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you learned something.